It is November of 1700, and a scene of chaos unfolds on a snowy plain beside a river. Swedish soldiers massacred a Russian army as a mass of Russians attempt to flee across a bridge, only to have it collapse under their weight. On the northern flank, two regiments attempt to hastily made square formation, battling on stubbornly. Swedish Lieutenant General Carl Gustav would lead an attack on the formation and have his horse shot out from under him, but the Russians held on. However, within a few days, the Russian line would capitulate to the Swedish king, Charles XII. This battle, the Battle of Narva, would prove to be one of the Tsar Peter's darkest days. But he wasn't even on the scene. Peter declared war on Sweden after his return from the Grand Embassy and the signing of a peace deal with the Ottomans. This allowed Peter to focus his attention on a goal of his, which was to establish a port on the Baltic Sea, but not just any port. Peter wanted to build a new capital, in the European style. There was just one problem. Sweden owned almost the whole Baltic Sea. However, despite Peter building an alliance with Denmark, Norway, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth under Augustus II, he severely underestimated the young Swedish king, Charles XII, who ascended to the throne at age 15, and upon ascending to the throne, proceeded to engage in a summer of violent drunken escapades known as the Gortort Fury, where Charles and his friends got wasted and ripped the hats and wigs off of random Stockholmers, threw furniture out of windows, threw cherry pits at men ministers, decapitated sheep, and got a bear so drunk it fell out a window and died. Then he did it again in 1699. But this may have all been exaggerated by history, so take it with a grain of salt. But he was also a 15-year-old with nearly unlimited power, so I could see it happening. After winning at Narva, Charles decided to focus his attention on Augustus and the Polish-Lithuanians, which gave Peter time to rebuild his army and engage in some city building. Peter decided on a spot in the region of Ingria to found his city, a great port on the Baltic Sea bearing the name of Peter's patron saint, Peter. Peter founded St. Petersburg in 1703, and he designed a city with a European style, intending it to become the new capital of the Tsardom. Meanwhile, after Charles defeated Augustus II multiple times, Augustus was forced to abdicate the throne, allowing Charles to refocus his full attention on Peter and Russia. At the Battle of Halitzian, Charles defeated a Russian force twice the size of his, splitting up the Russian force and routing it. However, Charles suffered his first defeat at the Battle of Liznaya in modern Belarus, where Peter's army ambushed a Swedish supply column, routing the Swedish force and making them burn the supplies. A number of Swedish troops got drunk and became easy pickings for Peter's cavalry. This defeat caused Charles to abandon his march toward Moscow. Charles decided not to retreat back to Poland, but to instead invade Ukraine. Peter moved his army south burning any potential supplies along the way in the infamous Russian scorched earth strategy. This caused the Russian advance to stop during the winter of 1708. However, by 1709 the war heated back up again, leading to the climactic June Battle of Poltava. The winter of 1708, you see, was one of the coldest in over 500 years, and by spring of 1709, Charles's force had shrunk to half its original size. On the 20th of June, 1709, a stray bullet struck Charles in the foot while he was observing Russian positions. Because of Charles's wound, Carl Gustav was in charge on the day of Poltava. The battle began on a cool summer night, at 4 o'clock a.m. when the Swedes attacked and overran two Russian redoubts, killing all inside. The Swedish soldiers were attempting to take a Russian fortress, but first they had to overrun the outer fortifications. The third Russian redoubt held firm against the Swedish attack. The battle would ramp up when the Swedes bypassed the redoubts and the army advanced toward the Russian fort. By 6 o'clock a.m., Peter was moving his army out of its war camp and advancing on the Swedish line. When the Swedes were 50 meters away, the Russian line fired, prompting the Swedes to return fire and to charge into the longer Russian line. However, the Swedish left flank ended up retreating, allowing the Russians to encircle the Swedes. 
After Poltava, Charles went to the Ottomans for refuge. Augustus was restored as king in Poland-Lithuania. Peter attempted to attack the Turks, but his campaign failed, and he was forced to return to ports he had seized in the treaty he signed way back in 1697. In return, the Sultan expelled Charles back to Sweden. Upon his return, Charles invaded Norway in 1718, getting shot in the head while laying siege to the fortress of Friedrichsten. Peter, on the other hand, took over Livonia, a Swedish province in southern Latvia, and occupied most of Finland. However, Charles refused to capitulate until his death. In 1721, the Treaty of Nystad marked the end of the Great Northern War, with Russia gaining Ingria, Estonia, Livonia, and a large part of Karelia. In return, Russia paid two million Reichsdollar and surrendered Finland. On October 22, 1721, Tsar Peter was officially proclaimed Emperor of all Russia, with Poland, Prussia, and Sweden recognizing Peter's imperial title. But not many other monarchs, fearing Peter would try to claim supremacy over them. He also founded a cult called the Jolly Company that worshipped Bacchus, the Roman god of wine, and sometimes got so drunk that people died. However, in winter of 1723, Peter began having problems with his bladder. By autumn of 1724, he was bedridden, and on the 8th of February, 1725, the Tsar Peter the Great, father of his country, emperor of all the Russias, died in his sleep between 4 and 5 in the morning. His legacy made in the founding of a great city and an empire.